Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That hallelujah is too low. Praise the Lord. We thank God for another day. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord shall be praised. Hallelujah. We thank God for today, the third day of October, and the third day of this great pray, international prayer conference. We started on a very high note on the first, and um, God has been taking us from glory to glory. I want to welcome our online viewers all over the world, in all our branches, in diaspora, everywhere. I thank God that you are able to log on this morning. I can see that a lot of people are already connecting. The Lord will bless you immensely in the mighty name of Jesus. This morning, lift your voice and just present yourself unto the Lord. You see, when you enter into a place, you want to mark your register. You want to put your name so that your name will be in the manifest. When you are entering an aircraft and your, your body pass is swapped or is scanned, your name goes into the manifest and they know that, oh, you have boarded this aircraft. And when the boarding is complete, the, the, the whomever, whether the captain or the chief uh, hostess, we say, boarding complete. And the door will be shut, ready to move. So I want you to log in yourself this morning. Position yourself into this third day because it's going to be a great day. It's going to be a third day. It's always an awesome day. Thank God for the first day. Thank God for the second day. The third day cannot be compared with what we had in the first two days. So present yourself to the Lord this morning and tell him, Lord, I am here. Lord, I am here. Lord, I am here. I've come into your presence this morning. I've come to humble myself before you this morning. I've come to seek your face this morning. I've come to position myself to go from the level of glory I am to another level of glory. Lift your voice and tell the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this morning. This is the day you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We bless your name, Jesus, for the first day. Thank you for yesterday. Thank you for today, the third day. Thank you for what you are set to do in our midst today. Thank you because as we seek you, you will hear us. As we seek you, you will answer us. As we seek you, we will find you. In the name of Jesus. Father, tabernacle with us today. In the name of Jesus. Tabernacle with us today. In the name of Jesus. We have come into your presence. This gathering, O oh Lord, is unto you. It is unto no man. It is unto you, O oh Lord. And we have come to gather before you. You may be the only one in your room, you may be in your office, you may even be in your car, you may be anywhere, you may be physically here in this auditorium this morning. Tell the Lord, Lord God of heaven, I have come to meet with you. I have come to meet with you. I have come to meet with you. Don't, I will not go back empty handed. He won't even allow you to go back empty handed. We used to sing a song, Do not allow me to go empty handed. And the Lord told me, he said, God will never allow you to go empty-handed if you are rightly positioned. So don't pray that prayer. Don't allow me to go empty-handed. Tell him, Lord, I am not going to go empty-handed. Help me to position myself to receive the, benef the, the benefits for this morning. In the name of Jesus. Lebo shata yada baba. Keriande rebo shanta ya. Lebo koto rekete bo sokoria. E kalababa baba ko shanta yada baba. E kralaba shante rianda raba shanta liande reke sayada baba. Lord, I ask you that everywhere your children are gathered right now, all over Nigeria, in diaspora, anywhere. Father, I ask you that, that you begin to tabernacle with them one by one. Let the word of God that we are going to hear this morning, let the prayer that we will pray this morning, Holy Spirit, be mixed with faith in our hearts, that it will yield its desired fruit. In the name of Jesus, not the letter that killeth, but the spirit that gives life. O oh God of heaven, the spirit of the word that gives life. The spirit of the word that gives life. That gives life. The spirit of the word that brings a look, a refer out of the logos. The spirit of the word that, that, that implants the word of God in our spirit, in our heart. That causes it to bring forth fruit. The word of God that, that causes, that the spirit of God that causes the word of God to be mixed with faith. 
faith in our hearts to bring forth fruit in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, we thank you. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for what you will do in our midst today. We glorify your name. Everywhere we are gathered, and those online, thank you for your many blessings. Thank you because by the time we finish today, everyone will know that we have entered another level of glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. We are going to worship the Lord briefly before we hear the word of God. This song has been ringing in my spirit since the middle of the night, since the vigil. You know that song, that, that song, the river that never runs dry. You know, it even says, oh, shimiri atata. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it well. But you see, it, it's, just been, I've not, it's just been flowing. I've been singing and singing and singing and singing. I want you to know that the God is going to flow to you today. Ah, say amen wherever you are. I said, I said, the presence of the Lord will flow to you today. The river that never runs dry will flow to you today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.
that you just make me up. And the saints all over in me, I put my trust. Yeah, oh, she be real. Whenever 
far I'm broken You're there to heal me As my healer Oh, she is my Oh, 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 oh,
Thursday, sorry, today is Saturday, and it's, it's, it's been amazing, it's been, it's been wonderful. Today, by the lily of the Holy Spirit, I want to take us through what you stand to gain, the benefits of this fasting and prayer. Listen, don't just fast and pray, just for fasting and pray. I'm sure by now, you know that that's not the level we are, we have gone past that level. Now, you need to, you know, when, when David got to the camp of the Philistines, where, you know, Goliath was ranting and talking, you know, against the army of Israel, David went close to one of them. He said, anyone that pulls down this Goliath, what will be his gain? He said, what, what do I stand to gain for this? Somebody may wonder, why is he asking that question? That guy is a smart guy. <laughs> I'm telling you. So what do you stand to gain? Now, when you know what you stand to gain, you put the whole of your effort and your life into it. Because like we have just sung, our God can never fail. He will never fail you. He never disappoints. When he never owes anybody. It's not like man that will say, okay, do this for me and I'll do that for you. And when you go there, you say, I've done my own. And a man is scratching his head. He say, I am sorry, I'm sorry. No, 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 God doesn't do like that. As we see the scriptures this morning, please, I plead with you. Stand on the authority of the word of God Because that word will not, will not fail you It will come to pass in your life In the mighty name of Jesus I say the word of God will come to pass in your life 
maybe you've never seen God doing wonders, immediate wonders in your life before. This, this season, you are going to see it too. You didn't hear me. Maybe you've, not, you've never seen quick answer to prayers before. You are going to see it in this, in this fasting. Because our God is a swift God. He's a quick God. He's a God of suddenly. Hallelujah. We are going to the book of Joel. One of the most profound chapters of the Bible about fasting and the benefits. Joel chapter 2. The Holy Spirit took me through this, this chapter all through the hours of the night. I'm telling you, and it's like I've never seen it before. And you see, when God takes you, when, when, when the word of God pops up into your spirit, hey, that means God is about to do something because the word of God works. Somebody said the word of God works. He said the soil went to the field to sow. And after he sowed, hey, harvest came. Joel chapter 2 verse 15. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and those that suck the breasts. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of his closet. Let the priests the ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar and let them say spare thy people O Lord and give not thine heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them wherefore should they say among the people where is their God blow the trumpet gather the people everyone thank God for this prayer conference elders are here Children are here. Little ones are here. Men and women are here. The ministers are here. Everyone, we have gathered ourselves together in a congregation to seek the Lord, to seek His face, to cry unto Him. Now, in this verse, verse, verse 17, Joel is telling us the kind of burden that we should come with in fasting and prayer he said lord that lord he said when they come let them cry and say lord spare not that is don't hurt them people of glory anything can happen but you see whatever happens take you from that level of glory to another level we saw the whole story of isaac i don't want to go back there but you see each time the enemy came against isaac God will turn it around. He did not allow Isaac to, be, to become a reproach to the, to, to the Abimelech and the people of the Philistines and the people of Gera. He was never a reproach. It may be a momentary thing, but he will always scale through and move to the next level of glory. When they took the most valuable things from him, normally it will seem as if everything is over. But he moved on. When they chased him away, they said, get out of this place. We don't want to see you again. He moved on. And as he moved on, he was going from one level of glory to another level of glory. Now, here the Bible says, as we gather together, it should be a body in our heart that, Lord, the whole thing here, spare your people, oh Lord. Don't give them as a, as a reproach. Don't give your heritage as a reproach to the heathen, that the heathen should rule over them. People should not say, where is their God? All we are saying is that, Lord, we want to move from the level we are to a greater level where your name can be glorified. He said, that should be the body in the fasting and praying. And I'm glad that's the body that we have all come with. Now, he said, when we have come to do that, then God will begin to answer in different ways. And the different ways that God will answer is what I want us to see this morning. Listen to me once again. Those of you here and those of you watching online, anyone that is relevant to you, grab it. Because it will happen. I didn't hear your amen. He says, seek and you shall find. He never said seek and you will be seeking and seeking and not find. So I want you to, to, to increase your faith capacity this morning to know that every single thing that God said he will do, he will do it for you in the name of Jesus. 
Amen. Verse 18. It says, Then, that is, after we have come together in fasting and praying, it said, Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. That is number one. The Lord will be jealous for his land and pity his people. You know what it means to be jealous for somebody? He will be careful for that land. He will protect that land. You see, when you are jealous over something, ha, you don't want anything to tamper with it. I once watched a movie uh, in flight of, of a very terrible husband. He would not allow his wife to go out. He would not allow his wife to do anything. If he sees any man around the wife, he, he will almost be that person. Ah, ah, and they were saying, why are you so possessive? He said, ah, no, 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 this is my wife. Eh? Hmm. It cost me a lot of money to marry her. She's such a beautiful and adorable wife. I don't want to see anybody around her. Now, that one is a form of jealousy. Although he did it in a very, very extreme and bad way. But you see, for God being jealous over you, he's going to somewhat protect you that you will not allow the enemy to deal with you anyhow. Ah, are you not catching this revelation? Hmm? He said, after you have prayed, then the Lord will answer and he will say, I will be jealous for my land and pity my people. From today, you will see God doting over you like a bride. That was what God did for Job. He built a hedge of fire around Job, around his household, around his children, go and read it, around his business, and he caused his business to continue to flourish. He was so jealous of Job, so jealous of Job, that when the devil was coming one day, God said, can you see my servant Job? Do you, have you seen him? And the devil said, eh, I see him now. Why well, I see him? I can't do anything about him. Because you have built the world of fire around him, around his household. He's prospering. So, what, what? you know, God was jealous over Job. May God begin to be jealous over your life. It's after you have prayed and I will have pity. You know, I used to tell people that don't look for man's pity. Look for God's mercy. Because that word pity that you are seeing here is not just is not pity of man, but it is it is the mercy of God. Let's go on. Number it the way you want to number it in your notes. The next thing, verse 19. Yes, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil and you shall be satisfied therewith and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen <laughs> I will send you corn I will send you wine I will send you oil you shall be satisfied you shall have enough to fill you up listen if you have never experienced that after this conference we will experience it too when you experience a level where all your needs are met, every every need is every no you are you, you are not owing anybody you are not running after scatter every need is met. That is what God says we do. He says He will give you wine, He will give you oil, He will give you wheat. You every you see, look, look, corn, wine, and oil. They all stand for various aspects of food. Say, and you shall be satisfied. I love that word, satisfied. You will be satisfied. The Lord will satisfy you. <sighs> In the name of Jesus, you shall be satisfied. Many of us are still far from satisfaction. But take this from me. You are entering to that glory of satisfaction. These are the words of the Lord. Though. They are not my words. I didn't write them. Next one. Even right there, he said, you will no more be made a reproach among the hidden. Landlord is chasing you up and down. You cannot pay rent. They are sending your children from school. You cannot pay school fees. You, like Bishop we say, you go to the next house and say, please borrow me salt. Salt of all things. Borrow me salt. Borrow me matches. Borrow me uh, small kerosene. God forbid, it will not happen again in your life. If that prayer is relevant to you, say amen. You will no longer be a reproach. They will not say, where, where is this God safe? She she carry Bible, she goes to church every now and then. 20. I will remove far off from you. Somebody say far off from me. 
I didn't hear you. I will remove far off from you the northern army and I will drive him into a land barren and desolate and with his face towards the East Sea and his hinder part towards the uttermost sea. His thing shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he hath done great things. <laughs> hey, Jesus. He said he would drive those enemies away from you. I love the way it is written. I think it is, is that, is that a message translation. Let, let me look for it. It says, either in message or in easy, easy translation. I wrote it here. He said, I will deal with your enemies. The enemies coming from the north, I will dump them in the wasteland and the remaining will end up in the Dead Sea. Half in the Mediterranean and they will rot. A stench of them will go to heaven. The bigger the enemy, the stronger the stench. Hallelujah. Look, the way King James said it, he said the northern army, he will drive them into, the, into barren and desolate land and they will face eastward. So if they are coming like this from the north, instead of going this way, God will divert them to face the other way. <laughs> because from north to south, it's a straight move. But when you are diverted to the east, you can never get to your destination. The devil will never get to your destination anymore. That's what God says he will do. Please believe it. See, they will rot. I will push them into a desert land, into a desolate land. They will rot. They will, their stench will come out to me. I will hear their stench. Are you still with me? Why? Why will God do that? He said because they have done great things. They have done too many terrible things against you. Enough is enough. Let me hear you say enough is enough. Say it again. Enough is enough. Shout it like you mean it. Enough is enough. Hallelujah. That is what God will do for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's read on. What verse are we? I want to be sure you are following me. Verse 21. Thank you. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice. For the Lord will do great things. Somebody is holding to that word. Be glad and rejoice, celebrate, for the Lord will do great things. Hear me, after this fasting, you will have reasons to celebrate. Rejoicing means celebration. You will celebrate because God will do great things. You see, by the Holy Spirit, you know, the word of God just punctuated the itemization of what he will do. He quickly punctuated it and put in something else that your mind can never fathom. So you know what the Holy Spirit is telling you here? Even the things that you can ask for, He will do it. But He will do beyond what you can ask or think. Rejoice, for I will do great things. How do you quantify great things? It's only God that knows the great things He wants to do. Is somebody with me today? Uh, may your faith capacity rise to receive this thing today in the name of Jesus. Rejoice. For I will do great things. Celebrate, 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 celebrate. It's a, 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 before I travel, like about three weeks before I travel. I was going in for, for my radio program early in the morning. Radio program is 7.30. So usually when I leave church, I get there maybe like 10 minutes to. And of course I have to go into the radio station like five minutes to time. But I got there a bit early that, that morning. I think like five minutes past seven or ten minutes past. And as, I, as we were packing, this man just ran to me. He just ran from nowhere. I'm like, he said, Mommy, hey, Joe, I walk by draw for mommy. I walk by draw for mommy. I'm like, where are you coming from? He said, that is my house. The house is just by the radio station. He said, my daughter has problem with her legs. Please come and pray for her. I said, why not? I still have like ten minutes. I, I followed him. Brethren, I've never seen anything like that in my life. I've been ministering to the sick, but I've never seen. You know, as, as soon as we got to the door of the house, a stench smell met me at the door. The smell was terrible. You know, those of you have ever used uh, pit latrine before. You know, when pit latrine has been covered over the night, and you come in the morning to open it, you know the way this thing comes. That was it. You know, 
I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't retreat. I gathered myself and I went in. When I got into that room and I saw the legs of this girl, the picture is on my phone. I can show you if you're interested. The legs are rotting from here to here, and then from here to here. I mean, rotting. They had to put cloth under it and the thing was sipping water. Ah! I said, What happened? He said, they, they, they fixed a date for wedding and a, day, a, a few days after after they fixed the date and announced the girl had started she, she had a little scratch here and she scratched it before you knew it in about a week the two legs were rotten I mean if I say rotten I mean rotten doctors said they will have to amputate the two legs I prayed my heart I, I mean I, it's not about my prayer but God I, pray, I said Lord no this must not happen. I prayed for her. As I was going, Holy Spirit said, give them something. I went to my purse. I packed everything I had in my purse. I gave. I said, look, just buy anything. Just, I just gave. And I left. I got to my and I started praying. I said, Lord, you have to heal this girl. The following Sunday, when I got there, ha, ah, the legs had dried considerably. Not complete, oh. Not complete. So that, I mean, all those water, I mean, the first thing I saw is that as soon as I entered into the, at the door, no more smell. No more smell. <gasps> I was so happy. And when I saw the legs, I said, eh? I said, ah, mommy, God is doing something. I said, we give glory to God. And I told her, now this is where I'm going. I told her, I said, look, you will still do that wedding, you know? I said, begin to think. I said, right there on the bed, where, because she couldn't get up, get up, okay? <laughs> Beautiful young lady. They said she's 20, 30, Abby. Ruth, can you remember? We went that together. I think they said she's like 27 or something. I said, begin to think of your wedding day. Begin to think of how you will dance. Begin to think how you will dress. Begin to, I said, be, let that preoccupy your mind. Don't let the devil continue to, don't, don't let the devil continue to make you see your situation. I said, don't even look at those legs anymore. Don't look at them. Begin to think of what we begin to happen to you after now. I, I'm talking about that scripture where it said, rejoice and be glad for God will do great things. I'm challenging somebody today. Begin to think of the great things that God will do and begin to think of how you will celebrate. Are you listening to me? If you are trusting the Lord for the fruit of him, begin to plan your naming ceremony. I'm telling you. The following week, I called again. At that time, they were able to now go back to the hospital because she was anemic, she didn't have, you know, she was very weak. So now they admitted her, gave her, you know, if you don't have enough blood, blood has to flow to your wounds to be able to heal it. So they gave her two pints of blood and they began to treat her. And when, when I saw her last, a few days ago, she was discharged. I told the father, I keep snapping the picture. When he snapped the next picture to me about a week in the hospital, I say, eh, can it be these legs? I'm looking forward to seeing her tomorrow because I'm going to the radio station tomorrow. I will come back and tell you the testimony. Listen to me. If God can do that for, 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 for anybody, he can do it for you too. Begin to rejoice. Begin to rejoice and celebrate because God will do what? Great things. Let me hear you say great things. These are the things that he said he will do. Hallelujah. Twenty-three, I'll be twenty-two, right? Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. <laughs> for the tree beareth her fruit, and the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. The pastures of the wilderness. Wilderness does not have any pasture. Wilderness is a dry place. I know it by geography. I've seen it with my two eyes. Wilderness is dry. But the Lord said he's going to cause the pastures of wilderness to spring. He will cause the trees to bear fruit. He will make the fig tree and the vine tree to yield their strength. To yield their strength. To yield their strength. The trees will become fruitful again. You will have bumper harvest. Is somebody saying amen to that? Yeah. 
when I was reading this scripture, the word of God just pumped to me. He said that it's a pasture in your wilderness. You may not see it, but it is there. So when the Lord speaks it forth, it will grow. That's why he said, tell the barren, rejoice, break to the right, break to the left, break to the front, break to the right, enlarge your tent because you're going to be a mother of many children. She's still barren, no, but he said, begin to rejoice because there is a pasture in your wilderness. Hallelujah. And I love this. It will yield its strength. Its strength. It will yield maximum. 23. I like the way the Holy Spirit just always truncates it. 23. It says, Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. Be glad and rejoice. Celebrate and rejoice. Why? Say, For he has given you the former rain moderately. And it will cause to come down to you, for you, the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. You know what that means? It means that God is going to give you the water that you need on that land to bring forth the fruit. Look, I was studying it not quite long ago. It says the rain that is required for sowing is the former rain. It's called the autumn rain. The rain that is required for maturing of the crop is called the latter rain, which is the spring rain. Farmers will tell you, you need a level of rain to cause the crop to grow. You need another rain to cause it to mature. In those days, you know, I used to love Agbaluma, it's my best fruit. But they used to tell us then, they would say, Ojoti Rossi, that is, you know, rain has not fallen on it. It's when rain falls on it that it becomes matured and sweet. God said, what the rain you need for your crop to grow, and the rain you need for it to mature, it will give you the same rain in the same month. <laughs> Is somebody catching this? And he said, he said, giving to you moderately means, I will give you in due measure, as much as is required, not too much and not too little. Because you may say, oh, if former and latter rain comes together and it's pouring, it will become a flood and flood is dangerous. But God is saying, I know how to measure the rain. Hey, you didn't hear me. I know how to measure it. I will give you enough that will not cause any problem. I'm going to give you enough that will make you fruitful. I'm going to give you enough that is required. The two in the same month. Let me repeat myself. If you have never experienced the goodness of God before, get ready. This is the season for you to enjoy it. You will have testimonies. So. Hmm. In the name of Jesus. See, I, I will give you in the first month. 24. And the floors shall be full of wheat. Uh -uh. And vats shall overflow with wine and oil. You know, in Israel, there are threshing floors where they thresh wheat. And there are wine presses where they press um, oil and grapes. Those are the three major uh, crops in Israel. Wheat, olive, and grapes. You remember when Gideon ran away? He, 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 he was threshing floor. He, he, was, he, was, he was pressing wine in the threshing floor because he was running away. So God said, in the threshing floor, where wheat is, they will have plenty. In the wine press, where they press grapes, you will have plenty. In the olive press, where they press olive, you will have plenty. So nothing, you are not going to lack anything. He says he will do everything one step after the other to make sure that it is delivered to you. Because don't forget that if there's no crop, and the crop does not mature, you cannot have a harvest that will give you wheat or oil or grape. So God said, number one, I will drive away your enemies. Then number two, I will bring pastures out of your, out of your wilderness. I will give you the former rain and the latter rain together. So the crop grown. I will also make sure that they mature. And I will make sure that they get to a point that they mature and you harvest and you get what you want out of them. Nobody is going to take them without it maturing. You didn't get that. You can plant a crop and it will grow to maturity and something happens and everything becomes bad. 
I have a small garden in my fa- in, in, at the back of my house, so I know. There was a time I had okra. The okra was growing, growing, growing. Suddenly, we came, came the following morning. Almost all the leaves were gone. This is it centipedes or millipedes climbed on the okra. You know, all those small, small uh, insects and, 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 and crawling things. They like to eat okra leaves because it, it, it's, it's nutritious. They, they, they almost finished the leaves. I had a, an orange that we planted that is growing. They fin- that orange is dead now because they chopped all the leaves. Nothing will chop your leaves. So. That business you started, it will thrive. Your life that is growing and the devil is telling you you will die, you will not die. You. Your wine press shall be full. Your threshing floor shall be full. Your vats shall overflow. In the mighty name of Jesus. Verse 25. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. Restoration of that great locust destruction. Every devastation you have had in the past, God said is going to give you a restoration. He will give you back what you have lost. Take this so it's for somebody. Somebody said, I've lost so many years. I've lost so many years. Where I am is not where I'm supposed to be. God will restore those years. In the mighty name of Jesus. Rachel was supposed to be married by, by Isaac, right? No. Jacob. They did magumago and gave, gave him Leah. So Rachel had to wait for another seven years. Is somebody listening to me? Maybe you are watching me online this one. Take this one. Rachel had to wait for another seven years for her dream that she had almost seen. It, 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 the night of her dream. That was the night the dream shattered. Hear me. I'm talking to you this morning. And it took another seven years for the dream to come. But by the time God finished with Rachel, God gave her the head of all the 12 children. God gave her Joseph that became the, 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 the what adjective do I use now? The, the, the most important in the family. Your years that you have lost, God will give you back. He will restore it back to you. Don't even think, how will it happen? That's not your business. That's not your business. If Rachel had married at the right time, Joseph would have been the firstborn in the family. But he ended up becoming the second to the last. Because after him came Benjamin. But it doesn't matter. That one is by counting. When God did everything, turned it around, no, but the brothers were prostrating for him. Eh? All his brothers that were several years older than him, they had to prostrate and worship him. Because when God says he will do a thing, no matter what the devil does, God has a way of turning curses around to bless him. So don't tell me I've been in this thing for many years. There's nothing you are going through that somebody else has not gone through. But the Bible says that God we give you a restoration in the name of Jesus. Locusts are terrible. Locusts, they can devour and destroy anything. But God says, I will restore. You say, my devastation is so much. Ah, I've lost so much. Forget about how much you have lost because what God is going to give you is going to be much more than what you have lost. I don't know why I'm, why I'm emphasizing this. I'm sure this word is for somebody. That has been your issue. Hear me, hear me, and hear me well. He said, I will restore. Twenty-six. Number it the way you want to number it. But from my numbering here, 
I have number 10. 26. And ye shall eat in plenty <laughs> and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. Can I read it again? You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. You will eat in plenty, you will be satisfied. Let me repeat myself. Maybe you've never experienced that before. You've always had to manage. You've always had to, to struggle. Eh? You, 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 you always have to borrow. What you have will have finished before another one comes. So in between, you are, you, are, you, are, you are stranded. Hear the word of the Lord. If you can believe this word, God says you will never ever be in a state that you will be ashamed anymore. He said you shall be satisfied because the Lord will deal wondrously with you. I love that one. It says, and you shall praise the name of the Lord your God. You know what that means? You will have testimonies. I said you will have testimonies. <laughs> Do you believe it? Hey. Don't be like that man that said, eh, even if God will open the windows of heaven, can this be? His mind is so, so small that he cannot even fathom what God can do. My fear, my, my dear, don't, take, don't, don't, don't work with your small mind. Let the Holy Spirit, by faith, brood over your mind so that you can begin to expect anything. Say the impossible and experience the, say the invisible and experience the impossible like Bishop will always say. You will never be ashamed. Shame is ending. I say shame is ending. It is not my word, it is the word of the Lord. Shame is ending. The Lord will deal wondrously with you in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. It shall not be by power, it shall not be by might, it shall be by the spirit of the living God. You may not be able to think the way it will happen, but brethren, it will happen. I don't know how best to tell you this, but just believe it. The Bible says, believe the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. Sometimes I shy away from giving some testimonies because it will make people think somebody is a super person. You are, nobody is a super person. You can get anything that anybody else can get. It's just about working according to the principles of God. You will not be ashamed. 27. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else. Listen. It's who you see you know, Abby. Now, if poverty, sickness, affliction, torment has been the gods you know, God, small G-O-D. That's how your mindset will be. You will always be in doubt and in fear. But God said, I'm going to now position myself that you will not see all those gods again. No, you don't understand. Look, listen. And you will know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else. So you will not see all those small, small gods anymore. You will look for poverty, you will not see it again. You will look for that sickness, you will not see it again. About a month ago, 
more than a month, for like two weeks, even, even up to a month, I was having this terrible back pain. <laughs> this back pain was so serious. Most times, I, you know, I have this aloe vera heat balm. I, I mean, of course, I can't rub my back. I mean, I say, Ruth, please help me rub this back. When she rubs it, I will be, I will be free. And I will, I mean, again, it will come. Especially after I've done some, you know, rigorous work or maybe protracted fasting or something. That back pain will just not. I began to pray and pray. One day, I had, I had to call Dickness Allow. I said, Dickness, I don't, my back is paining me. She said, maybe I should treat malaria. I say, I've treated malaria. I'm saying, it's, it's, it's paining me. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know what is happening. And then I began to stand on the word of God. I said, Lord, I'm healed. Lord, I'm healed. Lord, I'm healed. Lord, I'm healed. I kept saying it in the morning, in the afternoon, at night. I would say, I don't care what I feel. I know I'm healed. The Lord said he has healed me. He said he has healed me. I kept standing on that, on that word. I kept, I kept repeating it. I kept repeating it. Suddenly, I didn't see the back pain again. I looked for it. I didn't find it again. I'm trying to give you, I, 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 you know, to make you understand. He said, when I, am, when I come into the midst of you, I will show you that I'm the Lord your God and none else. So, that, I, I saw my healer and no longer the back pain. In fact, when I was traveling, Ruth said, Mommy, remember to carry your mammo in case we need it. I carried it through, through but I didn't, I didn't even know where it was because I didn't need it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I did not need it. And you know, sometimes when it is very cold, it's not really very cold now, but there were times at night that it was very cold, you have to cover yourself. Sometimes, you know, when you are feeling so serious cold, you can have pain. I didn't have any pain you. I don't even know where that heat bam was. As I'm standing now, I can walk from here to Oguri. And I will not have back pain. It is no more. That is what God will do for somebody. that these things will happen. When I started on Monday, I told you, I said, God anticipated that there will be challenges, there will be things in our life. That is why he made a medium of communication with him through prayers so that we can boldly come unto him at any time. Those of us who have young children, who we'll give them phone. You say, okay, take this phone. No, I'm going somewhere. If you have any, any issue, call me. Because they know that something may happen that that, that, child, that, that child may need to put a call through. God knows that we have issues that we, we, we need to put a call through to him because he's the only one that can solve those issues. So he gave us a medium of, 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 of reaching him, which is by prayer. And if you want to fast track it, you add fasting. You will see no other God henceforth in the mighty name of Jesus. You shall not be ashamed in the name of Jesus. I'm taking time to explain all these things to us by the leading of the Holy Spirit so that you can leverage on them. And, and as we pray, this third day is, is, is a day of total everything put together. Hallelujah. Verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Verse 28. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. There's going to be a great spiritual revival manifested in our lives because of spiritual gifts of the Holy Spirit. So the blessings of fasting is not just physical. There is a lot of spiritual blessings. Somebody told us yes, was it yesterday or day before yesterday, he said we have entered into a, a, a season of revival. Revival. The gifts of the spirit will begin to manifest in our lives. You can't finish this conference and remain the same way you are spiritually. It's not possible. We talked so much of the word about the word of God yesterday. The word of God 
both this one that is written and the one that comes into your spirit when you get to a level where the spirit of the lord begins to minister to you you begin to dream dreams not dreams of somebody chasing you up and down his sister told me the day before yesterday the day before yesterday, she said, Mommy, I dreamt. I saw myself, I slept in the dream and I did not wake up. So when I woke up in the morning, I was afraid. I said, Hey, you slept in the dream, you did not wake up, but now you have woken up. So what's happened? Nothing happened. <laughs> I said, Why do you allow the devil to, to torment you? In the dream, you didn't wake up, but now you woke up. Hey, you don't wake up, nanny. So I'm not talking about such dreams, so I'm not talking about dreams of somebody feeding you. I'm not talking about dreams of you running up one old man. Says, no, no, no. I'm talking about dreams, revelative dreams. Dreams that will give you divine direction. Dreams like the time that Jacob had and he turned his life around. Dreams like the one that they had when they took Jesus away. And Jesus said, look, the, your enemy is dead. Take him back. Such dreams that will transform your life. Spiritual, spiritual gifts. Some of you, have, you don't even know how to hear from God. After this fasting, you begin to hear from God. Nobody will deceive you with words spiritual revival these are the things you cannot fast and pray and not have spiritual revival it's not possible even the children even the young ones hallelujah I will out my those days may God pour his spirit upon you may you move from a natural person to a supernatural person May you move from the level you are to a level of a, a giant in the faith. You're not saying amen. May you move from the level of somebody the devil can toss up and down to the level of somebody that can stand, stand tall and say, devil, get out of my way. May you move to a level where everybody... You remember the story of Paul in the ship? Terrible storm. Night and he told me that there's nobody, there's no life that will be lost. So, all of you calm down. This calm down we are talking about. Somebody has said it in the Bible before. <laughs> he said, Calm down, nobody will die. They could not understand why did Paul have such such boldness because God already spoke to him. May God speak to you in your situation so that you will stop. You will stop being running from pillar to post. I mean, pillar to pole. I don't know which one is correct. Post or pole? She pole near the post. The two both of them. <laughs> ah, may God take us to a greater level today in the name of Jesus. The whole creation is groaning and waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. It's our year of new glory. And God said, I will go ahead to do something as verse 30. We will soon be done with it. it, it when you get back, you read it again and again and again. Verse 30, he says, I will show wonders in heaven. He said, after I've poured my spirit upon you, I've given you spiritual gifts and I've made you ready. Now, I will show wonders in heaven and on earth. Blood and fire, pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, the moon into blood. Before the great and the terrible day, of the Lord come now God is the one that says I will do these things I will show great wonders I'm going to cause some devastations some things that people cannot understand on the earth there will be darkness there will be blood there will be fire there will be pillars of smoke all these great things will happen but it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered for in the Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord has said and in the and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call God himself will cause wonders in heaven and then people will call upon him and I'm going to raise evangelists evangelists people that shall be shall be shall be shall be shall be instruments to deliver others because he said in Zion among his people I have a sister in Florida no okay let me say that I have a sister in Florida 
she over she, 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 she's, a, she's a health care worker she supervises a facility of like 320 patients in the heat of the pandemic more than half of them had covid out of her staff i think only eight did not contract contract covid and she was the supervisor she had to make sure that even those ones that had covid and those ones that didn't have she had to be there and she said they test them every week they do covid tests every week do you know that up to now this sister has not contacted covid once i'm telling you her testimony she has been here before mr Kipel. she said people will come and ask and say what is your secret she said you want to know my secret is god so if you want to, to enjoy what I'm enjoying, come and give your life to Christ. She became an evangelist. And then at a point, the Holy Spirit said, if I have shown you and I've shown them an example through you that I can heal you, then begin to pray for everybody that Corona ends in this facility. And she began to pray. Do you know gradually all those people that had COVID were getting healed and one after the other. Today, there's no more case in that place. All her staff are back. I have another sister, you know her. She's a member of the church. She was even posted to take care of COVID patients. Go, 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 go. And she's been taking care of COVID patients since that time till now. And she has not contracted COVID. And she will not contract COVID. See, I will cause blackness. I will cause darkness. I will cause fire. I will cause blood. I will cause this. But as many as call on the name of the Lord, they shall be delivered. So whatever is happening, whatever you see around you, you don't join them to say this and that and that. I'm not saying we should be careless. That's why we are still doing what we should do. Because, well, thank God COVID is going. We are doing what we should do. But what I'm trying to let you know is that it is not what you do that will give you the solution. It is calling on the name of the Lord that brings deliverance. And he said, as many as shall call on the name of the Lord, they shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion, in Mount Zion, Zion is the city of the Lord, and in Jerusalem shall be delivered. Jerusalem is where we dwell. Jerusalem is your house. Jerusalem is your place of abode. Jerusalem is where you find yourself. And wherever you find yourself, the Bible says there shall be deliverance. If you itemize them, I think they're like 15 or so. If you can read it again and break it down, you can have up to 20. If you break it down, small, 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 small. These are the things that God said he would do as a result of fasting and praying. So when we are praying, we are not praying amiss. We are not praying, Lord, if it is your will. No. We are not praying, God, please. No. We are saying, Lord, this is your word. We receive it by faith. We receive it with thanksgiving. We position ourselves to get it. We give you praise. You will begin to pray. Pray. Don't, don't pray. The type of Lord, if you, if, you, if you will, please heal me. What type of stupid prayer is that one? That man said, Lord, if you will, I know you can. Jesus Christ said, I will and I can. Oh yeah, be healed. When you have prayed it and you have not seen it happen, give thanks to the Lord because it must be surely happen may this last quarter of the year be the best you have ever had in the mighty name of Jesus if you forget anything don't forget that he said rejoice and be glad for your Lord will do great things everything that you are thinking about can be put inside that great so that if your own is not mentioned specifically here, you shall know that. Great, you have your own inside. Because it's able to do exceeding abundantly above what you can ask or think. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, we bless your name. I heard the Lord say, 
to tell somebody, this is going to be the beginning of a new year for you. Your new year can start at any time. Can start in January, can start in February. You know, when the children of Israel were leaving the land of Egypt, he told them, he said, it's going to be the beginning of months. So don't worry that we are in October. This is going to be the beginning of a new year for somebody. I don't know what that means. The Holy Spirit will explain to you if it is yours. Something new is happening to you today. I heard him say they have already turned their back so you are the one that did not know he said those enemies they have already turned their back against you you didn't know it now you think they are still pursuing you they are no more pursuing you they have turned their backs I don't know what that word is meant for but hear it clearly he said you think they are, they are still pursuing you you are still running gule, 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 gule. you are afraid hey, he said I've, 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 I've I've, I've, they have turned their back. I've made them to turn their backs against you. So take it easy. They can never catch up with you anymore. Because they are no more safe. Just the way Pharaoh perished in the Red Sea and couldn't catch up with Israel anymore. That is the way it's going to happen to you. The Egyptians you saw today, you will see them no more forever. He said, I've taken away that reproach. You may not know how. You may not know when. But he will do it again. Don't even think about how you will do it. You can't, you can't, eh? you can't even, your, your small mind is too small to comprehend it. You can't. Because it's bigger than your small mind. I see an handkerchief and the Lord said I'm wiping away tears he said I showed you for you to know handkerchief is used to wipe away tears Why used to wipe away sweat when you labor and labor and you are sweating you look for an handkerchief to wipe it away God said he's wiping away your tears he's wiping away your sweat labor is turning to favor he told me this one he said I'm taking Abana Life Church to another level <laughs> We will see it. We will see. All of you. We are all here together. We will see it. Ooh, Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you glory. Maligo shaya da basikiri ana la bashala bakuri adasala. The person that was against you before will be the person that will work for you now. <laughs> I said the one that was against you before will be the one that will work for you now. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your voice and let's begin to give him thanks. Wherever you are this morning. Give him thanks wherever you are. As you are giving him thanks, the hand of the Lord is coming upon you. you. See the hand of the Lord upon many hands, but I'm not laying hands on anybody this morning. No, I don't have such leading. Thank you, Jesus. Thank 
Forget about the person beside you. Forget about me. I have the Lord say, I'm going to give somebody an instruction that will lead him to that level of glory. Hey. So open your ears, open your heart to receive that instruction. He said, even children, I had he said, even children. Children in this place this morning, even if you don't know how to pray, just say, Lord, fill me with your spirit.
Father, thank you. Because according to your word, we have blown the trumpet in Zion. We have called a solemn assembly. We have gathered the people and we have sanctified the congregation from all over the world. You know, all the branches in diaspora, everywhere, online. Elders have assembled. Children have gathered. Even the ones that are given suck, they are here. The bridegrooms have come out of their chambers. The brides have come out of their closets. People that have reasons to be away, not to participate, they have cancelled the reasons and they have come. Oh, the priests and the ministers, we have come to weep between the porch and the altar. And Lord, we have come to say, spare your people. Give not your heritage to reproach. That the heathen should rule over them. People will no longer say, Where is their God? Be jealous for your people, oh God. Be jealous for your people. These are your people called by your name. Ah, Kira Mobakama Rami or Balarari. Oh God of heaven. Say there is an error that proceeded from the rulers. Princes are walking on bare feet. And servants riding on horses. That error is cancelled. Thank you for a new glory. Thank you because you will do great things. We shall rejoice. We shall celebrate. Everyone will have testimonies. Your name shall be glorified. Lord, I speak all this into the air in the name of Jesus. The Bible says as the wind blows, you don't know where it's coming from, you don't know where it's going, but you see the effect. You say that is how the Spirit works. Holy Spirit, as I speak these words into the air, carry it yourself and take it to deliver into the lives of everyone. Holy Spirit, carry it and deliver to every life, every home, every situation, every circumstance in Nigeria, abroad, all over the world, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We are grateful. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I believe the Lord spoke to a number of us, even right there, those of you watching online. Can you put the numbers on the screen, please, from the control room? If there's anything the Lord has spoken to you that you believe is not just for you, please call any of those numbers or send a text or WhatsApp. All those numbers are WhatsApp numbers. Let us hear what the Lord has said to you. As we were praying, I knew, I mean, I knew that the Spirit, some of you had words that are meant for you individually. But some of you, the Holy Spirit spoke to you some things that is for general. Don't hesitate to share it, even in this actual service. But like I said, those of you online, feel free to send it. I hope they are posting it. Please put that, put the number on that our, 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 yeah, I can see it now. Yes, call any of those numbers and share, share, share whatever the Lord is speaking to you and share your testimony as well because it begins now. He didn't say tomorrow, he said today. So as you speak in my ear, so I will do to you. God does not say wait till tomorrow. He sets the ball rolling. He steps into action immediately. For you, he has stepped into action in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to round off this first session and we'll go offline and then we we'll continue the prayers 
in our various churches, in our various homes, individually. We'll be back online tomorrow by 9.15 to continue in this service, in the prayer and fasting service, and of course, is the Sunday service. And um, when we come back in the next session, those of you who may have one thing the Lord has spoken to you, you don't want to keep it to yourself, we'll take time, the first few minutes, to hear those words, and of course, hear some testimonies as we continue. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you for joining online today, wherever you are joining from. I know you are blessed already, in the name of Jesus. We'll see you tomorrow by 9.15, because we are going offline right now. God bless you, in Jesus' name.